I rise to speak to the, uh, the Liberal Opposition Day motion introduced by our leader, calling on the House to recognize the fundamental right of all Canadians to freedom of speech, communication and privacy. This motion is in response to the Conservative government's invasive Bill C-30. If Canada is to remain a truly democratic society, it must strike the correct balance between security and civil liberties and individual rights and freedoms. As written, Bill C-30 does not ensure a balance among those principles. At the outset, the Conservatives demonstrated their disregard for Canadian civil liberties and individual rights. Rather than sit down and discuss with Canadians and have an honest debate and conversations about the strengths and the weaknesses of Bill C-30, this government attempted to irresponsibly frame the debate in rhetoric. The Public Safety Minister even went so far as to berate one of my colleagues, who was merely bringing the concerns of countless Canadians into the debate by telling him that he, quote, can either stand with us or with the child pornographers, end of quote. Attempts to demonize opponents of Bill C-30, and many of them are in my writing as well, Mr. Speaker, and characterize them as friends of child pornographers is not only reckless, but it is completely unwarranted. The Minister of Public Safety still has not apologized for offending those Canadians who have difficulty with some of the aspects of Bill C-30. Understandably, Canadians from coast to coast to coast do not trust this government with their personal information. After all, the Conservatives do not exactly have a glowing track record when it comes to managing individual Canadians' personal information. Through creeping individual, individuals' Facebook accounts and using personal profile information to restrict Canadians from attending public election rallies, sifting through personal medical veterans' records who ask too many questions, or inappropriately using voter identification databases to make robocalls that are all about election fraud, this government has worked hard to earn the mistrust of Canadians. In its current form, Bill C-30 forces internet service providers to track, save and hand over Canadians' personal subscriber information, including their email and IP addresses upon request without a warrant. This means that the Prime Minister's people would now have the legal right to monitor the emails of Canadians and track their movements online without any kind of judicial discretion. The Conservatives destroyed the critical long-form census because they claimed it was too intrusive into the personal lives of Canadians. Yet, they now propose, le propose legislation that encroaches deep into Canadians' lives and treats all Internet users as criminals. There are innocent Canadians out there, Mr. Speaker. The public outcry from Canadians and the Liberal Party following the introduction of Bill C-30 forced the government to admit its legislation was far from perfect and take the unusual step of shepherding its own legislation to committee before being debated so that it can be fixed. The government has said that it will consider amendments from the opposition, and we welcome that. Unfortunately, this is the same government that has abused its majority at committees to conduct business behind closed doors, making committee business the most secretive it has ever been and requests to do otherwise continue to fall on deaf ears. If the government forces the committee behind closed doors, it can oppose the reasonable and fair amendments that Liberals will be proposing without any public oversight. And this is a serious concern, Mr. Speaker. Sending Bill C-30 straight to committee for amendments is an important first step in admitting that Bill C-30 is highly flawed, but actions speak louder than words. The true measure of the Conservative government's commitment will be tested and witnessed during the committee proceedings. If the Conservatives truly believe that Canadians have the right to determine how their personal information is handled, then the Conservatives should be forthcoming and accept Liberal amendments at yeah. committee. Canadians, including my constituents in Brandon Bureau and St. George's, are listening with interest 
and taking note of the debate over C-30. One of my constituents aptly described this bill when he said, quote, this bill is a total invasion of privacy, end of quote. Another constituent, and these are Canadians from coast to coast to coast, Mr. Speaker, another constituent wrote to tell me that he was very concerned about this legislation. Quote, this will be a breach of the basic human rights of all Canadians. It almost goes without saying that giving this kind of power to any institution is ripe for potential abuse, end of quote. He goes on further, and I quote, not only that, we citizens will have to pay for it out of our taxpayers' wallets. There is also the dangerous potential of criminals having another gateway for hacking into people's accounts, end of quote. Another constituent wrote to me to say that he is equally concerned about the legislation, writing, quote, the online spying lawful access bills are poorly thought out and irresponsibly allow a range of authorities to access my personal data without a warrant." End of quote. A different constituent from my writing went further saying, and I quote, unchecked mass surveillance is a breach of my fundamental right to privacy. End of quote. These are just a few examples of the correspondence that I have received it's what Canadians are saying, and I'm sure all members in this House are hearing the same thing from coast to coast to coast. I've yet to receive a letter in support of Bill C-30. Privacy is a fundamental freedom enshrined in our Charter, and Canadians have every right to be worried about heightened surveillance of their online activities. Warrantless, warrantless use of personal information is an inappropriate violation of our Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Liberals are seriously concerned that the lack of judicial oversight in this bill relating to subscriber data and that forcing ISP and telecom providers to have the capacity to trace all communications in their system could create a very slippery slope. Canada's Privacy Commissioner, for example, Jennifer Stoddard, agrees. Her office, the Office of the Privacy Commissioner of Canada, is charged with overseeing compliance with both the Privacy Act and the Personal Information Protection and Electronic Documents Act. Exercising her mission to protect and promote the privacy rights of individuals, last October she wrote, the Minister of Public Safety detailing her concerns with the government's lawful access proposal. She said, and I quote, I am concerned about the adoption of lower thresholds for obtaining personal information from commercial enterprises. The new powers envisaged are not limited to specific serious offenses or urgent or exceptional situations. In the case of access to subscriber data, there is not even a requirement for the commission of a crime to justify access to personal information, real names, home addresses, all listed numbers, email addresses, IP addresses, and much more without a warrant. And this is coming from the Privacy Commissioner, Mr. Speaker. Apart from what we're hearing from Canadians throughout the country, this is coming from the Privacy Commissioner. End of quote for her. Mr. Speaker, the government must ensure the protection of online privacy rights of law-abiding Canadians. And let me say again, there are innocent Canadians out there. The warrantless tracking of, Canada, of Canadians' online activity unfairly treats all Canadian online users as criminals. Through Bill C-30, the Omnibus Crime Bill C-10, Bill C-4 and others, this government has raised serious questions about whether or not they respect the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Liberals will be focused at committee, Mr. Speaker, finding logical solutions that strike the correct balance between public safety and privacy. Here, here. <laughs>